rocks. This week we've got the mad chiller, Chad Miller, straight from Tulia, Texas. How you doing? Good. Good to see How you, you doing, Chad. man? Doing great. Uh, we are back. We've been uh, away for a little while, working on the studio, uh, trying to make Rowdy Music Factory a little cooler and a little better for uh, all you kiddies out there in television land. Uh, but we are going to be back on a regular podcast schedule starting weekly. Uh, this week we've got Chad Miller. He's got some shows tonight, and uh, you got some other stuff coming up pretty soon, don't you? Yeah, man. So uh, this like last week was kind of the start of the busy season. You know, it goes the summer's yeah. like patio season for the level that I'm at right now. It's patio summer, like it's just balls to the wall. So, you booked anything left with you? Um, no, it's I haven't really um, been at Leftwoods. It's uh, I. I think we'd probably go over there just fine. We just, uh, just hadn't got around to it yet, yeah. man. We've been so stinking busy. We're, um, I know full band wise, we're playing um, Saturday night at the um, Sixth Street Saloon. Um, but besides that one, I've got six other gigs, including the night that just this week. So it's, I mean, I'm just, it's it's good. I'm not complaining. I'm 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 loving being busy. It's just, it's uh, it's. Like, like I said, this, uh, this is the start of the busy season. So. You know, we've talked about this before. I actually met you on a Emberly Musicians Exchange. Yeah. Well, it was a gear swap thing, and then we started talking. Shady parking lot Craigslist Shady parking lot Craigslist <laughs> type deal, yeah. Yeah. And uh, you said you just decided one day to just start playing, and you just started booking, and well, so pretty soon you could get Yeah, so my dad, I guess my background, my dad played whenever um, he was younger, and... Um, and so there's always guitars and stuff around the house. When I was about 10, I, I told him I wanted a guitar. I wanted him to teach me. So he taught me everything he could. And then uh, uh, when it got to kind of the point where, because um, he, he played a lot, but he wasn't like a, a super uh, skilled musician or whatever. So, um, But he, uh, he he bought me a poster with, with the chord charts on it. And he told me, all right, sit down in front of the radio. And this is a G. So you go to G and wait. You hit the G. Yeah. And then when it comes back around, you play the G again and you try to, if the C's or D's next, whatever. So, um, I kind of learned initially how to play like that, and then um, and then kind of taught myself um, by ear after that, and then uh, went through. Uh, I, I gigged on and off through high school and college, and went through South Plains Music uh, program at uh, at uh, in Loveland at uh, South Plains College, and um, I had a blues trio in college, and, and played on and off. Uh, it, I worked at a wood shop and and and. And gig that's how I made a living in college and uh, got married had a kid moved back to Tulia and uh, farmed for just a little bit and I realized there wasn't a whole lot of money in that yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I didn't farm I drove a tractor for a for a farmer so yeah 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 there's a it's a it's a different level man you just it's either you have it or you don't and farmer like you just live in debt basically and, and recycle it every year so uh, but yeah after that after that I was a I became a paramedic. I was a paramedic for six years. Yeah, yeah, man, and uh, and still gigged on and off. I played lead for some people and uh, and did my own thing a little bit. Um, and then uh, one day, man, we were I was I was a Sunday morning and I was working. I was on shift and uh, we go to pick up a guy who had like four hundred five hundred pounds and he was laying in his garage floor and and we go to pick him up and I separated my shoulder, pulled it out of socket and had to have five pins put back in it and. Um, couldn't saddle a guitar for almost a year, and then once once I oh, I got um, once I got uh, released from the doctor and I could play again, um, I wound up stepping into a pretty good deal. I, I, I bought a Gibson Humbird off of a dude um, here in Amarillo, and it was a I felt like I stole it from him. It was a really good deal. Was it Corey? No, no, no. <laughs> it was an older gentleman. He bought it brand new and, and played it like three, four times and got cancer and ate up with arthritis and couldn't play it anymore. And uh, he practically gave it to me. I mean, I paid him a little bit for it, but he wouldn't take what I wanted to give him for it. He, he just wanted it to be put to use. And after I got that guitar, I was just like, man, I'm, I'm going, I'm, I'm done being a paramedic. Man, I was miserable. I was working my tail off, and, and uh, I just done riding an ambulance and, uh, and just went at it, man. It kind of took me a little bit to get, um, to get a good rotation in the Amarillo music scene, but. Uh, once you get in here, man, it's like we're all family. Like, yeah. yeah, everybody knows everybody, and we're all, you know, buddies, and we we see each other from time to time, yeah. but we're usually playing across town from each other. So, but uh, if you're doing it right, your buddies will never see your shows, and you never see theirs. That's, that's <laughs> yeah. exactly right, because well, everybody's busy, man. Yeah, we and have uh, that magic moment where everyone links back up, you know. Yeah, so night. that uh, that first year, uh, full time, was like uh, 
I kind of went full time playing um, in like April. So like April to December, I did like ninety eight shows that year. Wow. Um, the second year I was at one hundred and fifty four, and this year we're shooting for about one hundred seventy. Wow. So it's okay. it's busy, but dude, it's a grind, man. It's uh, it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday is not really glamorous. That's when I'm in the office making calls and sending emails and following up, and that's the hard part. And the rest is. I can, I can only imagine this conversation with your wife. She's like, okay, hang on, you want to do what? Yeah. You want to quit being a paramedic? And with play insurance guitar. and benefits, yeah, and yeah, you're gonna, yeah. and you're gonna be gone. How much? Yeah. Okay. I've got a wife and three kids and, <laughs> and a mortgage and bills, just like everybody else, man. But it's a, uh, there's something about it. It's a, it's a job that uh, not many people get to do, and no. a lot of people wish they could do. And I just look at it like if the good Lord's blessed me with the opportunities and the, and the, the ability to go make this thing happen, then that's what I'm gonna. I feel like I got to do it, man. So, I just go go into it full steam ahead and. I really look back. I mean, my voice hates me sometimes. <laughs> you know, the yeah. the third hour of the the fourth gig that week is it's you know I I got to stretch a little bit to get there, but it's uh, like this week's gonna be <laughs> gonna be a run. But but it's it's fun, man. I just I, I play all over the place. I get to meet really cool people and um, just love it. Man. There's not a better job out there. There's really not. And you know, being creatively fulfilled in your life and being able to make a living at it is a rare blessing. It is. It's that's not something that, uh, like you said, I mean, not everybody can do. It. A lot of people wish they could. I mean, myself. I mean, I, you know, I've fought the corporate grind for years myself. Yeah. And I finally. Well, I mean, there's a there's a uh, there's a really good podcast I was listening to called um, the New Rich, and it's mm-hmm. and it basically talks about the same thing. It's like, you know, how do you, the way people used to measure wealth and richness is not necessarily the way you should look at it these days because. Fulfillment is a is a big thing, and if you're fulfilled in what you're doing and you're making good money, that's one thing. But right. if you're going to it and you're grinding every day and you hate your life, then then why do it, man? Like, it, and so I look at it like this: my wife, she's on board, and the kids love it. And during the summer, when the kids are out of school, they get to come with me a lot because oh, right we got on. the we got the band van and it, and uh, we roll around and try to. Those are the gigs I try to work in a hotel with. Yeah, <laughs> but we'll take a, like I'll go out during the day with the kids and wife, and we'll go. Catch a movie, or we'll go play putt putt, or you know, go to like the the synergy or bowling yeah. places and stuff, and uh, and uh, it's fun, man. We we go travel every once in a while, and you know, in, in uh, being able to take your family is another. I mean, how valuable is well, that? Well, it's like take the kids to work day. I mean, yeah. in the corporate world, people do that once a year, or once you know, even if that if that's a real thing, you know, like they uh, you always hear about it, but yeah, for me, I mean, I don't. My kids don't necessarily. I've got a ten-year-old son, or almost ten-year-old son, a five-year-old son, and a one-year-old baby girl, and I don't necessarily go get to go to the bars with me a lot of times. I mean, if it's a yeah. patio, you'll get like Joe Taco or something. They'll get to go sit out and, and eat and hang out and stuff. But uh, they, uh, some of the bars and stuff, they don't get to come to. But uh, they still love. They love my kids. Love hotels. They love. I always try to get one with the pool, so that way I know they're occupied while I'm while I'm playing and stuff. So it's fun, man. It's a good job. I I wouldn't trade it for the world. Who's uh, who's in the band now? So that's yeah, that's another thing. So like I play solo acoustic about sixty to seventy percent of the time. Right. Um, but I've just uh, last year we put a band together because um, I had some songs that I thought were worthy of, of recording and, and putting out there and playing some different venues in front of people with. And uh, but uh, so we started uh, Chad Mill and the Good Fortune. Right. That's the band's name. Um, we started out with kind of a completely different lineup than we have now. Uh, but my brother Jody, he's my drummer. Um, we've been playing music together since we were little kids, man. Like, like I say, I got my first guitar when I was ten, and he started. He got his first drum set when he was six. So, oh, wow. um, I mean, it's where we don't even have to talk, look at each other. We just, you know, he knows by the way I'm standing or how I lift my legs if I want him to speed up nice. or slow down or whatever. You know, it's a really cool thing. <laughs> um, Andrew Fox plays lead guitar, and uh, you know, Foxy, he's he's crazy good. Yeah, Foxy. what's up, Foxy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's nuts, man. He plays he plays in a few bands here in Amarillo, and he's just he's the best, man. He's so tasteful. It is. He, he never hits a wrong a wrong that's, note. It's, that's probably the only thing that really pisses me off about him. Is he's so good. He doesn't it's, make any mistakes. No, his, and if he does, <laughs> he hides them so well that yeah. nobody knows. I mean, um, yeah. and then uh, bass has been tough. We've we've run through. I've I've been subbing in some buddies to. To play bass with us and stuff, but we finally got uh, guys full time with us now. Jeff Marquez. Okay. Um, from Amarillo. Um, he's you. actually from Hereford, um, but he lives here in Amarillo now, and he works. Uh, my brother, 
and him both work at Guitar Center. Oh, I see. Um, and so that's really cool too because we get the family discount at Guitar Center. We'll have to, so we'll have to yeah, that out. yeah. So uh, if you uh, if you need some, I got the hookup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember uh, Cody was playing with you for a little bit. Boo, Cody. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, Downs was playing with us, man. He he fills in. He's one of he's one of the buddies that that uh, that fills in when when uh, when it's a good gig and and it pays good. <laughs> Yeah. Good enough, man. That's the thing, no. Uh, but yeah, the, Jason Hodges plays with us every once in a while. Cody plays with us every once in a while. Um, my buddy Ray Everett um, out of Lubbock, he plays with us uh, occasionally when we play in Lubbock on the road. He's right. in a couple other bands too, so it's hard for him to get on the road too much. He played in Lubbock. Um, we played the Blue Light a couple weeks ago, which was a really cool, um, a really cool time. We're playing there again um, in July, uh, I think. But uh, I play. Solo acoustic. We play the Spoon a lot. Um, Texas Cafe. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. there on Fiftieth. Yeah, we play there a lot. That's a that's a fun place, man. It's a it's a that place has a history behind it too. I mean, to be able to stand on a stage and say that Steve Ray Vaughan stood where I'm standing, like that's a yeah. it's a cool thing, man. It's not. Um, but I play. So I play. I play. Uh, like I said, the Spoon, the Blue Light, uh, Triple J's, uh, the Back Forty Grill. Um, Is the local still there? Uh, yeah, it's just down the road yeah. down there. Um, we, we, we had something booked there and there was a scheduling conflict, so we had to cancel that one. But, um, uh, World of Beer, there's a new place. Uh, yeah, that's, that's a, that that's place, a cool yeah. spot. I think I'm playing there next, next Tuesday. So, but that's a, yeah, man, there's just, there's a ton of what Lubbock. It was kind of my, you know, I was in the Lubbock scene before I was in the Amarillo scene. It was, um, because I went to college and we lived there and, and, um, and, the, the difference in Lubbock and Amarillo, it's it's crazy because Lubbock has some great players. They have some fantastic players, some really good venues, and uh, and they have a really good um, supportive community for the music scene. But they're super saturated with people who play. Really, and so it's hard to it's it's a little bit harder to book um, quality paying gigs because there's always somebody that'll do it for. Fifty bucks yeah. and the the exposure, you know, you get uh, paid an exposure. Uh, the old some, exposure some bucks. Well, some some places pay good, but uh, some some places it's hard to hard to get them because uh, because they want to they, they'll provide the exposure and you provide the talent. So, but Amarillo, man, once I once I got in the scene, man, it's uh, it's like a brotherhood up here. Like most of the venues kind of stick together and 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 they support it. And then most of the most all the guys we everybody kind of has a has a respectable. Um, sound that they put out and a, a respectable show that they put on and they yeah. they want to get paid for that so they kind of stick to the good price range where it's not like unionized but it's kind yeah. of you know everybody knows well, that the going rate here is, is good man well yeah it's, it's, it's kind of mapped out you know? yeah man yeah yeah I, you know I've been playing here a long time yeah 30 years yeah probably. I mean yeah and it's there's there's you know, I've had my moments where I've bitched about the scene here. You know, it's either up or it's down. Yeah. It's never really, I don't know, I'm trying to remember when it was really down. It, it's always just different, you know. I mean, it's it, it's it's, uh, it's an organic thing, you know. It's those yeah, there's not, flows and there's not a, there's not really a, a rhyme and reason, a rhyme and reason to it. It, it kind of, even just the few years that I've kind of been playing, I, and I always call this my home base because Amarillo is, I mean, I, I live in Tulia, so it's, yeah. The shortest drive where I can make the most money and, and play the most amount of venues, right. and um, so I always say I'm cutting my teeth there. You know, this is my this is my spot. So it's uh, yeah. There's not a lot of places that uh, that that really that you really gotta haggle with, man. Most everybody's right there. The numbers are right for for most places, and and they they support the local scene, hire the local guys a lot. Yeah. And, you know, one thing that's uh, always remained consistent is that. Uh, yeah, customers pay about five bucks to get in, and each player makes about a hundred bucks a night. It yep. was the same in 1991 <laughs> as it is now. Yeah, we need to we need to account for inflation. We need to account for inflation. Uh, it's definitely a love. It's more of a love or money situation now. You love it more than you love the money. That's the thing, man. And <laughs> and, and I, you know, sometimes we, you know, like uh, like we'll play at a certain venue here. That's that's. I don't want to drop names or anything. We we played a, a venue and it's. Kind of a, a historic venue on a main road here in yeah. town, and and it's cool. It's a good spot, and it's got a great sound system. There's usually a good front of house guy running it, and they take care of you with food and drinks and stuff. And uh, it's got a good size stage, and 
it's a fun place to play but you make the door and if it's not busy then you know but it's still a fun show like it's yeah. a good trade-off it's a it's never i've never had a bad time playing there it's yeah. fun. so there's several there's a couple places like that but most places are are very supportive of the scene and and uh you can kind of respect what's going on so yeah it's it's been good to me yeah it's it's that's what i'm saying my i, I don't have uh that many years into it in this area, but uh, or in the Amarillo scene, but it uh, once I broke in, it was uh, you're not gonna get me out anytime yeah. soon, man. That's it's home base. Thirty, 30. so I'll be thirty one in October. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> I feel like it's some days, and then some days I'm like, yeah. just here, is it over yet? What uh, what do you got going up the next couple of weeks? Uh, look at my schedule here. I should have had this stuff memorized, huh? Um, this will probably run tomorrow. Tomorrow's May first. Okay. So. Um, tonight is so uh, the Broken Spoke uh, Thursday. I'm at Joe Taco, um, Amarillo. Friday I'm at Polk Street Eats. Saturday I'm at Moon Doggies early, and then we play full band at the Sixth Street Saloon. Sunday Cinco de Mayo at Joe Taco, oh, wow. and then I had a plane view for a Cinco de Mayo thing Sunday night. Um, the seventh, so Tuesday the seventh, I'm at World of Grand Lubbock. Friday the tenth I'm at Butler's. Saturday the eleventh we're full band at uh, Cook's Garage in Lubbock. Oh, that's right. a that's a cool spot, man. Yeah. That's a really cool spot. Shoot me a calendar. Is it on your your? Uh, yeah, yeah, your, I've got it all. I like to you know we'll we'll put all those links on there, all, all those dates and uh, locations on the uh, end of the show. Yeah, yeah, I've got a. I, I usually try to. You know, social media is everything now, so I yeah. usually try to. Um, I'll usually make an Instagram post and that shares to the music pages. Yeah. Um, and I, I try to throw out a couple months worth of gig schedule at a time. So nice. I, think, I think we had like uh, tw- had like 20 shows this month. Um, I think we're at 17 for next month. Um, oh. Yeah, the next couple months are busy, but you got to work. You got to take it when yeah. you can, you know. So you know, December and uh, January are kind of slow. So Never gotta, stop needing to eat. No, man. No. <laughs> And that's the thing too is if I you know if I'm gone that much from home and stuff I can justify it by saying well look you know we made some money so <laughs> yeah. it's always easier on the wife if uh, if you know you bring home a little bit of money so what's your wife's name Amy Amy she's from Silverton Amy. Hi, hi babe <laughs> hi babe <laughs> but uh, yeah man it's a it's a it's a cool thing it's a cool job you did numerous world release that kind of thing um I play at Dalhart uh, quite a bit at the really? XIT uh, Steakhouse thing up there yeah it's called the the XIT or the, the 10 in Texas wood fire grill. And let me tell you, every gig, so I made a mistake as the first couple times I played there is I would get there, you know, 30, 40 minutes before it's time to play. Let's try to scarf down a meal and set up and you can't do that, man. The food is too good. Yeah. You got to, big guys, we got to sit there and we got to eat and then you got to sit back and do this. Oh, rest for a minute. They, their food is so good, man. They, they're uh, top notch. That's it. Carrying this I, around, uh, man. I know, brother. Uh, I uh, I have finally made it a policy to uh, not eat before a show because I just <laughs> feel like hammered dog shit. And oh, you yeah. know, my shows, you know, my, my band, you know, just loud punk metal band. Mm-hmm. So I'm screaming at the top of my lungs oh, yeah. for two hours, you know. And oh yeah, man, I'm afraid something's gonna come Coming up. Out, yeah, <laughs> I, I make it a point now. If I'm gonna eat, I try to, you know, trial and error. You get there plenty of time, yeah. plenty early, and 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 have plenty of time to eat. And, let it digest a minute and then set up and stuff. Burned so, off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dalhart, no, that's a fun place. Um, we played there. We played there quite a bit, uh, or I do. And then we've we've uh, they booked a full band a few times too. So I think we'll be there full band in uh, July and in August. So that's cool. It's a cool spot, man. If y'all are ever in Dalhart, check them out. What's up, XIT? What's it called again? The XIT's Woodfire Grill. XIT Woodfire yeah. Grill. You know, I grew up in Boyce City. So oh yeah. We used to go up to Dalhart when I was a kid. When you wanted something to do, yes. Yeah, you know, we go to Dalhart, spot. and it was, you know, it was, it was. That's that's the one thing that kept me from being born in Texas because we were on a farm like three miles inside the Oklahoma State. <laughs> right, right. Just barely. So Boyce just City by was like eighteen miles away. Dalhart was thirty-three. Yeah. I was born on Christmas morning in seventy-three, and like, they, you know, mom couldn't hold out. Take, take Taking it the shortest, Texas. the shortest no, one. No, I was born in fucking Oklahoma. <laughs> well, we don't hold it against so, you. You're here yeah. now. That's all that matters. Yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Emerald transplant all my life. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, you want to uh, play a couple of songs? Yeah, first? man, for sure. All right. You guys stick, uh, stay tuned. Uh, we're going to uh, run a quick cut, and uh, we're going to have some music by Chad Miller. What are you going to play for us? So this first one, uh, 
It's gonna be. Can I plug my album real quick? So my band. Yeah, yeah, plug it. My band, uh, Chad Miller and the Good Fortune. We're getting ready to put our put our first EP out. Um, it's been a long time coming. We've been working on it a while, but um, this one's gonna be on the album. And uh, this one's called Another Shot. <laughs>
everything around us and now it's our turn oh it's our turn we almost had it all but i guess we That's been said we can't take back And I'm sorry it don't come easy But that's where we're at Oh, it's where we're at I'm almost at it all But I guess we had it all but I guess we Very nice. Thanks, man. Okay. Yeah, the... Do you listen to a lot of podcasts? Yeah. What, which ones did you listen to? Um, listen to... Uh, yeah, you listen to, to, like, Rogan? Or? Listen to that one a lot, yeah. Uh, Rogan, like, I'll... Sometimes he's full of shit, but sometimes, like, he's got some... My biggest thing is he's got some really interesting guests that he puts absolutely. on there. Like, like, I like the doctors and the scientists. Like, Elon Musk, that one was a good one. Yeah. Because that dude's... He's yeah. out there. Yeah. Um, Kevin Hart was on there, and it was it was kind of a good one. It was an ins- like a motivational one. Um, sure. But he has some, he has some good guests on there. Uh, uh, I can't keep track of half of the guests we've had on there lately. Uh, remember Owen Benjamin was a trip. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, some of the older ones, like one of my favorite ones, one, one of my heroes was always James Hetfield. You know. Yeah. And uh, never really, no one really ever just sat down and talked with that guy. You know, on camera, not for three hours. Yeah. And like you know, this guy's been a hero all my life, and you know he's just he's just a dude. You know, he's he's I mean he's a multi million dollar dude. He's got houses all over yeah. the place, but his main house is in Vail, Colorado, and he <laughs> yeah. raises honeybees. Yeah, you know? does his own. Yeah, yeah, and you know, so like here's James Hetfield, multi million dollar international superstar. Yeah. He shows up with all these old farmers and stuff and talk about bees. Who was the? Uh, there was one man. Uh, dang, I can't remember who the guy was. Uh, I I know his name, but I just based on it. Um, Oh, dang it, I can't think of it. Uh, some old rocker, man. Dang it, I forget who it was. Oh, I can't remember. But anyway, it was, it was fantastic, but he was like way out there. Like yeah. way out there the whole time. Like just talking, telling stories, but it was nonsense. Like nobody could understand him. You couldn't follow his story, and this guy was like in his element. <laughs> it was hilarious. <laughs> I just like the one where he got uh, re- got Elon Musk to smoke weed the first time. That was hilarious, yeah. man. Oh, yeah, I was out there. Listen to that one or listen to uh, Daily Zeitgeist. 
listen to Dan Cummins and Time Suck, Hail Nimrod, yep. Praise Bojangles, if you're paying attention. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's another good one. Uh, the Amarillo Podcast, uh, there's uh, the Weekly Relapse, that's uh, uh, it's, uh, it's kind of like this one, but it's yeah. all for Amarillo Comics. Oh, cool, man. Uh, Jason Boyett has Hey Amarillo, shout out to Jason. What's up, man? And uh, I think some of the other Amarillo Podcasts that have, there's a couple more out there, I'm brain farting right now. I need to I need to look up some of the Amarillo ones, uh, I listen to a bunch of the, the comedians' podcasts, yeah. like I listen to Bird Crashers. Uh, Tom Segura's, yeah. Joe Rogan, those are all good ones. Like Joey Diaz. Joey Diaz, dude. That, that guy's guy hilarious, man. Uh, he's the best. I, he's just an animal. Like, yeah. he's just an animal. It just it doesn't matter what it is. He's just the extreme on yeah. every subject. How <laughs> is that guy still alive? I don't know, you man. Know? I don't know. Yeah. He, uh, but yeah, man, it, like, I've always wanted to get in. Like, I've always thought about, about trying stand-up, doing comedy. Like, I know they got a, the Yellow City. They have they mm-hmm. have the open mic stuff all over the place, so... I, every once in a while, I'm like, man, I could think I could write a 20, 15 minutes. Like, I think I could, I think I Dude. could do it. But then you think like, there's a lot of, I get a lot of people that say, mm-hmm. you know, that that say oh, I could never play music, and I'm like, yeah, you, you honestly probably can. You just don't. And I'm, I'm not saying I could do comedian like comedy because I don't know. I've never done it before, but I know that it's a, it's an art form too. Like it, it's completely. I, I just started doing stand up. Really? Yeah. How's it going? Do you like it? Uh, you know, it's, is is it addicting as as it music? Is. Like really? once once you have a good set, yeah, and like you get the whole room rolling, it's it's a different vibe. I mean, it's just like yeah. it's just like having a good set playing music, you know. Except the load in's a lot easier. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, yeah. But you know, uh, I did one last Thursday for uh, B and J's Productions. Oh yeah. And uh, they do a thing at the end of every uh, Thursday uh, called Thirsty Thursday Medley Melee. Shout out to B and J's, Jocelyn, Zim, love you girls. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it was you know I've, I've been hanging out with uh, Tyler Valentine and uh, like uh, Patrick Johnson, some of those guys yeah. that are you know been doing stand up and I, I had a really good set last week and it was like man it was be- the best part about it was it was just unrehearsed you know I just just, just kind of just get up there and just start talking and yeah see what spills out yeah yeah I think that's how you have to start too like I mean I there's like I, I've I've I, I'm not a com- comedian expert by any means or whatever, but um, I listen to a lot of those guys' stories. Like, uh, like uh, Bert Crasher interviewed Dane Cook, and I always thought Dane Cook was a little bit uh, over the top, kind of slap comedy, slapstick a little bit. Like, not super, but like, but man, his story is very interesting. It's a great story. That's yeah. a good. That's a really good podcast. Um, that's a really good episode. I used to love to hate on Dane Cook, and now I kind of like him. Well, man, his his whole thing was how he he was the first comedian. He cornered the internet market. He right. was the first one. He was the first comedian on MySpace whenever the internet started. Right. Um, he was like one of the first twenty. Um, you, uh, the first twenty websites on the internet. He he was one of them. Oh, wow. DaneCook.com. That was the one of the first ones. Like he was right there at the oh, beginning shit. of it all, according to their their story. But and uh, whenever MySpace started up, he uh, he kind of got somebody told him like, hey, this can be big. You need to be a part of it. And so he got on there and he would his thing was he would message every person back. If they sent him a message, he would message them back. It didn't wow. matter. And for thousands and thousands a week that he would and then he just. It grew with him, and, and it's a really cool story, and, and uh, it's a great episode. But the, I love listening to the like I think because I think music, mu- music and comedy are very closely related yeah. in what we do because we have to sell ourselves to an audience every night. I mean, yeah. whether it's cover songs or originals, um, you have to convince them to enjoy themselves in front of you. You know, like you have to sell them a good time, yeah. and that's that's what I always say. Like uh, I. I I try to stay as humble as possible with this, with this whole thing. But you know, it's hard. Every once in a while, you get uh, you have a good night, and you have a good set, and people come up and they're like, "Oh man, you were fantastic!" And you try not to get a big head about it, but it you also put good, a lot man. of work. You put a lot of work into what you do and man. your craft, and you hone it. But psychological validation, man. The, that's the, the thing is, it's the good freaking, for you. The gold stickers, you know. Yeah, that's that what is. it is. Yeah. And you, I try to keep those, and I, I remember them. But I also know that there's a million other people that sing better than I do and play better than I do, and and I'm just lucky to be working. And we, we used to have a saying: uh, no matter how good you think you are, there is a 13 year old girl in China that can smoke. <laughs> can your ass. smoke you, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, the Chinese man, they get you every time. But, you know, a lot of comedy. Uh, the best comedy is uh, kind of brought out from honesty. You know, oh, yeah. truth. You know, what do they say that uh, I uh, I mask my sadness through the prism of humor? 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, it's probably pretty good. And, and I think a lot of musicians do that too. They they mask what what they're feeling with the music. You know, like I like it's it's hard for me to write songs. Like so a couple of those songs, um, and and there's even a couple others on the album. They're they're like sad songs, and yeah. I've got a good life. Like I don't I don't know where that heartbreak or torment comes from. Like sometimes I feed in off of. You know, I got a song that I wrote called This Old House, and it's about um, my buddy who called me one day, and his girlfriend of six years um, left a note, and she left him, and she was gone, and he was walking down the hall, and he saw a picture that they took together, and he just punched a hole in the wall, so I wrote a song about this guy slowly, like, just destroying his house, you know, every day, and the yeah. the walls, are, the doors are off the hinges, and, and so is he, and stuff like that, like, it's a... It's but sometimes, sometimes you gotta draw. You know the process is weird, man. Sometimes the story makes you sad, man. Yeah. On, on my EP, we've got a song called "So Much Me, So Much You," mm-hmm. and that was about a story that I had read in like Reader's Digest when like, twenty years ago, and it was about <laughs> this. It was it was heartbreaking, man, because it was about this these these two gay dudes in this little town in England, and they were just kind of you know financially stuck where they were, and they were like a really conservative community, and they were really persecuted, and they. Uh, committed mutual suicide in the bathtub, oh, man. man. It just broke my fucking heart. And, yeah. You know, and so that's I, a bad deal, man. Yeah, and so like, man, I, you know, I can't relate to it, but it made me really sad. So. But it's, so, it's yeah. something that touched you on an emotional level yeah. that stuck with you, and that's I, I think there's a lot of times that that certain things like that will happen, and and maybe we don't realize it or know it, but then I'll be driving home, you know, and I'll either hear somebody say something on a podcast or hear something like that song, like um, that last song, Fallout, like. It started. It started with I heard uh, uh, on a TV show or something. I don't watch a lot of TV, and I was probably halfway paying attention. Um, but I heard somebody say um, that um, their love fizzled out, and so for whatever reason, I got the I got a like one of those old TNT bombs with the fuse coming out that was like the yeah. fuse fizzled, and then then I wrote that next line that you already let the fuse will never make it out, and then it got it turned into this like destructive relationship yeah. song you know and like I just think that it's weird man the process and I think it's that way for comedians too like I think for comedians I can't speak for them but I've listened to a lot of people stand up and, and I love it and uh, some of it's there's a lot of truth in it like they yeah. tell stories and they gotta put a funny spin on it and their timing has to be just right but you know they timing, it's yeah. it's gotta be you gotta come start from the truth somewhere you know comedic timing and the truth man yeah, that's man. A, what do they say uh Three chords in the truth, or some shit like yeah, that. Yeah, same thing. Yeah, <laughs> same thing with music. Most country, yeah. yeah, country songs. Or most what's your, so, songs, like, what's your what's your like creative process? Like, mine is the worst because it's when I'm driving a damn car, you know, and I can't get a guitar in yeah. front of me. So I'll sit there and grab my phone and try to take a voice note and hum some shit into my phone that mm-hmm. you know is completely unintelligible by the time I get it home, and I just hope that I can remember it when I get to where I'm going. It's like, oh man, it's gonna be awesome, and then you know, and then <laughs> it's gone. I don't. What is she doing? She wants to be part of she's the show. N- she's never this like it's the, clamoring for attention. It's the vibe. It's my cat. Anyway, yeah. they uh, no man. It's it's weird. It's never the. It's not always the same thing. But I'm not. There's there's certain people that can write a write words around a melody, and I I haven't. I'm not saying I couldn't do that. I just it's never been that way. It hasn't worked that way for me. Like I always have the words first. Like yeah. it's it all. Not all of them. You know, like it usually starts out with. A certain phrase or saying or thought or something that I'll hear, and it'll be the, uh, <laughs> it'll be the, uh, you know, something significant in that song, and I'll kind of build a thought around that, and then I'll grab a guitar whenever, you know, it's usually yeah. after I get home, you know, on the way home, I'll hear something, I'm like, oh, that's a good lick, or oh, that's a good line, or something, and I'll do a little voice memo, or, or yeah. do the speech to text thing, and stuff. Songwriting and, takes practice. And it's, <laughs> yeah, that's the thing, too, it's, it's not, it's, I've gotten more diligent about it now. I'm still not where I want to be. Like, I, there's certain people that, you know, they write a song a day or they write a song yeah. a week or something, and I would love to be like that. I'm, I'm not yet. Um, but uh, that's the thing. If it works for them, it works for them. That's not really. That's the thing. You and know, I mean, I want to. I've, I've, my catalog is not necessarily small for original music, but maybe small for good, or yeah. good original music. You know, so I, I don't, I don't buy into the fact that you know, there's an old thing that. For every thousand songs you write, nine hundred ninety-nine of them will be shit. Like yeah. I don't buy into that fact. Like yeah, I think yeah. that 
there's a ton of people out here there they write hits after hits after hits and, <laughs> and that's all they write and there's some people that write they, one and, they write they may not have written it you yeah know. but at, i i think that you just write what you feel and Try to put a good melody to it and hope people enjoy it. Plus, think of all the garbage that cuts through and oh, makes. Yeah. You know, there's some idiot out there that got a house on the hill from some stupid three chord god off that he that he yeah. wrote and it it just hit got in front of the right ears at the right time. You know, about beer and pickup trucks and yeah. summertime and girls and yeah. yeah, man. Another one of those check mark. Yeah. And I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. It just it that's not my process. And like I say, I hope that. The only thing I can hope is that what I write is has some element of truth to it, and hopefully that people enjoy it. That's yeah. that's all you can do, man. That's all you can hope yeah. for. Well, I'll tell you what, man. I'm going to wrap it up here. Yeah. I Guys, guess. we're going to put uh, Chad's schedule at the very end of this. Go check him out uh, this weekend. You where? Uh, what? <laughs> One more time. Uh, yeah, so for Thursday... May 2nd, I'll be at Joe Taco in Amarillo. Um, Friday, May 3rd, I'll be at Polk Street Eats. Saturday, uh, May 4th, I'll be at Moondoggies early, right. and then we'll play um, full band at the 6th Street Saloon. Killer. So. Okay, cool. Well, man, thanks for being on the show. Hey, thanks for having me, Love man. Love having this is, you. This is fun. This is uh, new to do to again. Yeah, time. man. Uh... <laughs> and then uh, we'll go ahead and... Uh, get all this shit uh, clipped up I'll do it in the morning I'll send you links to like our yeah. social media yeah. and stuff yeah, yeah. Like, well I mean I, I think I've got your social oh, okay, media yeah. I just need to I just need to see a calendar okay. and what I'll do is I'll just put you know just put some graphics up with the, and I've got the dates on it and, and you can feel free to steal it I've got a um, it's on I, I know I'll put it on Instagram but it's also you know what I want to know is I want to know what that app is that you said that oh that app yeah that's our that's the calendar for June and July or May yeah. and July but you can feel free to steal that. Yeah, yeah. I'll use so that. what are you talking about? The... You told me about an app that if you if someone's calling out shit, it like shows you the chords and it... Okay, so this is cool, man. This is it's called Guitar Tap Pro. It's this one right here. Guitar Tap Pro. It's like a, a nine nine cents or a couple bucks or something like that for the pro version of it. Right. But it's awesome. It's it works really good on a tablet. Um, because they have like condense it for the phone, but it's it's ridiculous. So, pick a name one of a song that you like. It doesn't matter, any song, uh, or any band that you like. That we'll just say Sugar Ray. Okay, so let's say dumb. band. We'll say Sugar Ray, and so Sugar Ray pops up, and then every song that's been tabbed out on the internet is on this. So like, there's all their. Let's say you like. Um, this one. Cool. So there's the chord chart for this song, and most of sometimes you gotta, sometimes you gotta, you know, it'll tell you what key it's in if it's capoed, um, and then so say somebody called that out, you put it on auto scroll and you set it on your thing, and it'll sit there and scroll that song for you while you play it. That is fucking bananas. And then so check this out. So say you like this song. Say you like this song, go up here and click save, add to favorites, and it'll tell you that it was saved to your device. That's fucking great. So crazy. then you go, oh, sorry, oh shit. So you go to your favorites, and so under bands, you scroll down to Sugar Ray. Q R S. Let me count my alphabet here. Oh, there it is. And there's that song. So not only that, but like how I use it, see if I can get out of it. So how I use it is you can make individual set lists. So these are my set lists. So like this is the set list I'll play tonight. Like there's 200 songs in there. I won't play all of them, but like this is pretty much my set list. So it keeps my set list in order. And then you can upload your originals if you tab them out, you can upload them through Dropbox. So like here's another shot. This is my song. And it pulls up a chord chart for my song. That's crazy. Yeah. And you can keep them in order in your set list. So like for our full band show, I've got the Good Fortune set list right here. And 
and that's see it, it glitches out on my phone for some reason where it don't scroll but it keeps it all all saved and so like you can go like on let's see I don't know why I did that again I'm close it and I'll come back up but like you can go to like there's a little I don't know why it doesn't show it right there but there's a Dropbox tab oh. and like there's all I've got a ton of original songs on there that I've saved as a chord pro um there's an app called Songbook, mm -hmm. and it'll let you uh, make chord charts to all your music um, and save them as a chord pro um, file. And then you put, just put them in your Dropbox. And when you link your Dropbox to Guitar Tap, you put them in your Guitar Tap folder, and you can pull any of them up. That's fucking like, bananas. It's nuts, man. Like it's the best, dude. This is the this is the best investment that I've ever. Like now, I don't really need it, but when yeah. I was starting starting out and you know, like, was, you know, really trying to work up a three-hour show, um, and I didn't quite have enough. Like, dude, this this app saved my life because you can limp through anything yeah. with a chord chart almost. You know, if you've heard it a couple times, you have a chord chart. If if I've heard it a couple times and I have a chord chart, like I can I can limp through. It. Like, uh, we played at a crawfish bowl in North of Big Spring the other night, and um, somebody hollered out "Seminole Wind" by John Anderson, and I've heard that song a million times my whole life. That's a damn good song. It's a fun song. Um, I didn't know what key it was in though, and so I pulled it up on that, and we killed it. Foxy killed it. That's so, amazing. I mean, yeah, it's nuts, man. Like it's, <laughs> and they tipped twenty bucks, threw twenty dollars in tip jar. So I mean, it's it's a cool. I mean, it's definitely paid for itself. <laughs> it for itself. Ten for times sure. over. Yeah. That's it's a, awesome. It's a legit.